What's up everybody? This is Trinity Gamer 333 here today to bring you the next video in the Xenoverse 3 series videos. And for those of you that don't know, this is a series of videos in which we talk about new ideas and implementations that could be added into the next installment in the Xenoverse franchise. And also I'd like to clarify, as I stated in my last two videos, these are not actual confirmations. These are just ideas that I have collected from around the community as well as myself and different ideas that we would like to see in the next installment in the franchise. And what I like to call this new game that could possibly come out in the future is the Dragon Ball game to end all Dragon Ball games. And um, let's today we're going to be talking about part 3, character creation, sub part 12, final character creation synopsis. So without further ado, let's begin. So the idea of the character creation system that they bring up that I implemented and brought up and talked about that they should add into for the Xenoverse 3 game is... Um, how it should link up with the different modes to add a lot of variety to your created characters to give them their own unique feel set aside from everyone else's characters that even makes you feel completely different from another person with the same race as you so if you're facing off against another Saiyan you should honestly feel like that both of your Saiyans have had two completely different backstories and are completely separate in terms of their development their character and not feel kind of like generic alike a lot of the time in Xenoverse 2 when you faced another Saiyan and you both did the same transformation, had some of the same similar attacks, and had the same aura color, and you have almost the same hairstyle and everything, and it just felt like you were just kind of a cut, uh, cheap cut off of that person. So um, that's the idea of it. Now the races that I have included in the next game for the character creation include Saiyans, humans, Frieza race, Namekians, and Majins, and then also the new race of the androids. Now the opening creation should add many more options to set characters apart, add more color scheme options such as different layers of coloring schemes, so different um, skin layer systems for Namekians and Frieza race characters and even the cell like characters for the androids, add more horn slash tail slash antenna slash hair options to all the characters, and that was the opening character creation. Then we talked about keys, auras, and colors and I think that they should add new types of key that affect the stats and the charge rate add new and many different auras to give them and add more variety to all characters so this in, this goes with my aura color video that I talked about in which they could uh, you could be able to charge up as a super saiyan with a green aura if you wanted to then also add the ability to change color attacks to add more variety the next topic we talked about is transformations and this, they should add a lot of unique and new transformations to each race that balances all the races to match each of the other races in terms of strength. So you know, the max power for the humans should almost somewhat compare to the super between Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3 for the Saiyans, whereas the two divine transformations that both of them hold, with the Super Saiyan Blue and the Dragonfire form, should be pretty much equal and balance out each other when it comes to the stats that it gives and produces because they're both divine like transformations they should <clears throat> I also again stated that we should add a divine transformation to each race to again balance out all the races in terms of power because you know you look at Super Saiyans and and even the Frieza race who got had the golden form and they felt very overpowered in Xenoverse 2 especially compared to the humans and the Namekians and the Majins and I know that you could do a lot with the humans and the Majins and the Mechians to give yourself an edge in the game. And that is true, but I'm also thinking canonically, um, kind of also just to make them more actually on par with each other when it comes to the actual canon and how powerful each character is and all that stuff. Um, and also make the transformations progressive for each race so you know you should have to be able to go through Super Saiyan 1, 2, and 3, and then 4, then even then after that God, and then Blue. And then, you know, for the Frieza race, you should have to go through first form to final form to max power, then to golden form, and then golden God form. And then, you know, so it's a progression system so, you know, throughout the story, you're not just starting with Super Saiyan Blue or you're not just starting with golden god form or even not even starting with super saiyan 2 or 3 you know you have to earn super saiyan 1 and then after that you have to earn super saiyan 2 
and you only unlock those by powering up more and becoming more powerful. So just a progression system overall for the transformations. And then also this is my extra thoughts on something that they could kind of bring back from Xenoverse 2 which I really enjoyed was the dress up the partner characters such as in the Xenoverse 2 partner system and this gives the ability to change the partners into any clothing they have at least worn once in the series and color it in any way you wish so any of the clothing that you ever saw in any of the different characters should be placeable on all the characters now I also think that all of the characters on the roster maybe not every single one but almost all of them should be able to be customized in your own specific way to again add more variety if you want to uh, have a partner who a Jiren who has a pink suit instead of a red suit then do it or if you want to have a Deborah who has a black coat instead of a blue coat you should be able to do it and should be able to add you know different maybe even a different um, like a scouter to Goku or something like that. You should be able to add more variety. Again, this game is solely based on variety as his biggest seller because you know all these all these Dragon Ball games have really felt very similar to one another and all the different aspects of them have felt too closely linked together. This needs to add variety on a scale that's never been seen in any Dragon Ball game to make it more long lasting and proficient as well and then you should be able to perform a set number of attacks as well so you should be able to give maybe even like give Vegeta the Kamehameha and give Goku the Gallic Gun or something like that add again more variety and more uniqueness so if you guys like my video subscribe to me here at Trinity Gamer 333 and leave a like and a comment and next time we'll be having video uh, is the part four clothing items and weapons sub part one the overview and yes we're finally getting into the clothing items and weapons and I'm going to be talking about their usages as well as how they can affect the gameplay overall so until next time guys thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day